Hello, 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 hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. We're just going to give it a few minutes, just let everybody log in. I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, grab your pens, grab your notebooks. uh, Find a comfortable place, position for you to be in. We're together all the way until 8 p.m. tonight. It's Bible study. I've missed you guys terribly. (laughs) Terribly. I want you to go ahead and tag somebody, send somebody a message, give them a quick call. Um, tell them that we've got Bible study, they need to log in and let's just fellowship together for a little bit. Um, Allow me to apologize in advance. Um, My health is uh, (laughs) interesting times. Um, I literally had my doctor come on set today. Uh, That probably gives you a bit of an idea of uh, an eventful day that I've had today. Um, but we're still here and God is faithful. Um, so please, if I need to blow my nose or I sound nasal or blocked, I'll try my very best to be as audible as possible. And, um, so that you guys can hear me nicely. But if anybody comes in and says, why does she sound like that? You are who I hear. You'll explain why, um, I'm a bit blocked in the way I sound. Um, but yeah. Um, a big shout out to my doctor this today. Uh, she was such a blessing um, for getting me back on my feet. Um, I think we'll give it a minute or so before we get into it. I just want to test the sound. Are we good with the sound? Are we happy with the sound? If any of the team members from Jesus as Jesus that can just give me a thumbs up. And let me know how we're doing with sound. Um, if I do need to take the volume down just so you guys can hear me, uh, please also just let me know. What's important is the word, is not the background. Um, but yeah, I'm just waiting for that thumbs up and then we can go. We're good. Alrighty. Oh, Father, we thank you. Um, we thank you. We thank you, great King. I just want us to pray um, just for a few minutes, set our hearts right, and really just block out the noise and really just zone in to hear what God has to say to us today. Um, uh, I know it's been a long week for many of us. It's been ups and downs, some really great moments, some really low moments. Uh, But we just want to pray that there's no distraction in this time, that we're able to hear what God has to say to us tonight. We're able to hear the word of God undiluted. We're able to to take it for what he is saying to us tonight. And whatever stresses, worries, frustrations, blocked nose, headaches, whatever that is not right or the way we want it to be, we just want to submit that over to God. We just want to submit that over to God this evening to say, Father, as we come to your table to feast on your word, you are the main attraction, you are the focus, you are the priority. You are who we are loyal to in Jesus' name. Can we just pray that quickly? Let's just pray that. Pray that over yourself. I know you've had a hard week. Pray that over yourself, your friends, your family, to say, Lord God, as we zone in, I know some of you guys are watching with your family members. That Father, as a family, we are intentional about this time. Shall we pray? Father, Lord God, Father, as we come together as a family here on Jesus, as Jesus, that we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that you were good to us on Monday, that you kept us on Tuesday. That Lord God, when the sun came out on Wednesday, you were still our beautiful God. And even today, Lord God, the mere fact that there's breath in our lungs and we're able to sit and gather in this manner, We do not take it lightly. We give you all the praise and all the glory this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, as we come before your word, as we come to feast 
on your word. We come against any form of distraction, anything that will want to shift our minds to other things, anything that will want to lift itself up above you, anything that will want to take our attention away from you. Let any trick or device that the devil wants to throw at us today. We declare, Lord God, that the next couple of minutes belong to you. Lord God, as we delve into your word, that our ears are open to hear, that our hearts are fertile soil. Lord God, that our hands are ready and waiting to do that which you ask us to do tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray over every single soul represented here. Lord God, I pray a covering over them. I speak a peace over their hearts. Those whose hearts, Lord God, are in turmoil. Those, Lord God, who are fighting. Those, Lord God, who are exhausted. Those, Lord God, who've had the worst week. Father, we just pray your peace over them. Your peace that surpasses understanding. Your peace that goes beyond all things, Lord God. We just speak your peace. And we thank you, Lord God, that this evening, as we gather in this manner, that you have a word for us tonight. That, Father God, we are here to receive receive that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we honor you great king we honor you great king Ooh. father God I honor you I honor you great king that father your grace is sufficient for us tonight that you're the one who carries us through tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Alrighty. I'm going to blow my nose a lot. Please forgive me. <laughs> ah. Praise God. Alrighty, welcome to Bible study. Uh, if you're new here, uh, my name is Rorisang Tandekiso. I usually sound a lot cuter than I sound today, but the Lord is still good. <laughs> uh, I'm one of the team members here at Bible study. Jesus this, Jesus that. We are a collective of people who are just madly in love with Jesus. We take every opportunity we can get to proclaim him to study his word to pray to seek his face to gather to go over his word together and uh, we're so glad that you could join us tonight and our hope is that you will come back but more than that that god will speak to you tonight Uh, more than you logging into this appointment that he has an appointment with you and we just pray that as you join us today be it your first time or your hundredth time that the lord be good to you even in this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We do Bible study every single Thursday at 7. Uh, depending on my crazy world, <laughs> we try our very best to keep it. Last week, I was completely out of it. This week, my health is still giving me a bit of problems. But here we are. We're going to push through and we're going to prevail in Jesus' name. We want to encourage you also to be with us tomorrow morning at six o'clock. We've got prayer in the morning. Uh, It's usually based on what we've gone through today. So we read the word, we understand it. And then tomorrow morning, we start to apply it by speaking it into our lives. So I want to encourage you to come through. Um, It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Alrighty. Uh, If you're taking notes, you can go ahead and write. I feel like this thing is loud, but you guys will tell me if I'm out of my depth. (laughs) If you're taking notes, our subject line tonight is, I don't know that man. I don't know that man. If you're writing it down, I don't know that man. I don't know that man. Father, as we approach your word tonight, we pray that it's undiluted, that it's not biased to my thoughts and my ways, but that it is your word purely and true. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. We're looking at Mark 14 today. Mark 14. 
is what we're looking at. Uh, we're going to bounce a little bit between Mark 14. We're going to look at it from verse 27 to about 31. Then we'll take it up again from about verse 66. So if you can just open your Bible at Mark 14, you probably will be okay for the rest of the evening. And then I want you just to take your notes and bounce in between the two, your notes and the word, and we can journey along together. In Jesus' name, it is well with us. Uh, Instagram has taken the time off, so the timekeepers, I can do the right thing there so that I don't go over <clears throat> the time. Uh, Mark 14, we'll look at it from verse 27. Uh, it says, on the way, Jesus told them, all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Verse 28, but after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of of you to Galilee and meet you there. 28, but after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Verse 29, Peter then says to him, even if everyone else deserts you, so key, I will never. Then in verse 30, Jesus responds and says, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times that you even knew me. Verse 31, Peter says, no, Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same thing. All the others vowed the same thing. Maybe let's put a bit of context here. Peter is a fisherman uh, before he meets Jesus. He comes from a small town. His life is centered around fishing. He encounters Jesus and has such an encounter that he leaves everything he owns to follow Jesus. He begins this incredible journey with Jesus, highs and lows, where he sees Jesus healing the sick, um, Jesus performing miracles in the Three years of Jesus' ministry, Peter is right there along. Oftentimes when we look at Peter amongst the disciples, you could go as far as saying he was probably the spokesperson. Most of the times when somebody's speaking on behalf of the disciples, it was Peter opening up his mouth. Peter was also not afraid to go to Jesus to ask for instructions. He was also not afraid to ask questions when there was something he didn't understand or he needed clarity on, whether it be forgiveness or what one must do in this situation. Peter is the guy. Uh, we also see that Jesus deals with Peter with a level of patience and kindness. It's almost like he understands him. He meets Peter always at the point where Peter is at. If Peter is vos angry and frustrated, Jesus has a way of meeting where he is. If Peter is scared, shaking, Jesus has a way of reaching him. Peter is in a privileged position. He is not only a disciple, but he is a fellow and a friend of Jesus. This interaction in Mark 14 happens straight after the Last Supper. Jesus has expressed that which is to come. He expresses that which is to come, that this is where I'm going and this is what is going to happen and I will rise from the dead and this is what is going to take place. And Peter, hearing what Jesus says in verse 27, is taken aback and immediately refutes and says, Jesus, everyone else can deny you, but I will die with you. I will die with you. If you're taking notes and you want to use it according to the scriptures, you can just write there verse 27. Jesus says, all will desert me for scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Then verse 28 says, if you're taking notes, but after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. Most times when trouble comes, most times when tribulations come, most times when the difficult seasons of life come, 
Those seasons that feel like God is not there. Those seasons that make you feel that God is somewhere maybe looking in the opposite direction. Oftentimes when trouble comes, we run. It's when I lost my job, I moved away from God. It's when I went through that heartbreak that I moved away from God. It's after that person passed on, I was angry and felt betrayed and I moved away from God. It's after losing my business that I moved away from God. It's after my marriage failing that I went about and did my own thing. Oftentimes, when trouble hits us, mm, when trouble strikes, we run, we, we move away from the ship. But I love what Jesus says here, and I hope somebody hears me tonight. In verse 29, the Bible, to, or verse 28, the Bible tells us, but after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Watch. After Jesus fights your battle, woo, after he saves your marriage, after he gives you the career of your dreams, after he gives you the promotion, after he gives you the financial freedom, after he heals your children, after he fixes your life, after he pulls you out of the mess that you created, he says, I will meet you in Galilee. What am I trying to say to you? Long after the problem is solved, he is still there. Mm. Long after the situation is dealt with, he says, I will go ahead of you. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Jesus is concerned not only about your now, but your future. He says, firstly, I will rise from the dead. I will conquer death. I will conquer the frustration. I will conquer sickness. I will conquer loss. I will conquer brokenness. I will conquer captivity. I will conquer all of that, but I won't stop there. I will still go ahead of you and meet you at that place. Jesus is not interested in just the situation you're dealing with right now. He's interested about your future. Woo! That's why the Bible tells us that when he came, he came to save. And not just to give us a good and soft life, but he came to present everlasting life. Your future is always on his mind. Point number two, he says, I will go ahead of you. I will go ahead of you and then meet you there. I want you to write there, meet you there. Meet you there. I want a relationship with you. I don't want you to pop in because you need a quick prayer for a quick fix. I want to meet you there. I want us to have an appointment. I want us to commit to meeting. I want us to commune. I want us to keep promises to each other. If I said I'm going to be there, you know that I'm your father. I'm going to be there. He wants relationship with you. He doesn't want to come in as just the problem solver. Woo! He wants to come in as your Lord and Savior. He wants to come in as Abba, your father. He wants to come in as your provider, your healer. He says, I will meet you there. Take my word for it. Having gone through everything, I will be there. Woo! Whether they arrest me now and beat me up and hang me on a cross, one thing you must be guaranteed of, I will meet you there. Even though you're going into that courtroom and it looks like you're losing that battle, Jesus says, I will meet you there. Even though the marriage looks like it's falling apart and the children are running helter-skelter, Jesus says, I will meet you there. Whether the degree or the career or the money is not coming together, he offers his presence as a solution. He says, I will meet you you there. He's a promise keeper. Verse 29, when you read it, you see how mm, Peter responds and, and, and Peter responds from a place of self-assurance. Mm. See, in this moment, Peter doesn't understand who is speaking. He, he maybe has got an amnesia. He's forgetting who he's talking to. He, he is so engulfed in his own pride and his own ability that he honestly looks at Jesus and responds. Ooh, looks at Jesus and responds and says, Baba Angba, go fail, I sing. 
Hey, baba mba kafe ba isina. Baba mba kata wa isina. Others can take bribes, not me. Woo. Others can live a wretched life, not me. Others, not me. See, 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 Peter's stance is not to say, Jesus, why would you say that? What is it that I can do to ensure that at any point in my life I never deny you? No, he immediately gets into pride mode where he boosts himself boastfully saying that it may be a difficulty for others, but not him. They are beneath him. It sounds a lot like us Christians sometimes when we look at other people. Ooh, the high horses that we sit on that they will fail, we won't. <laughs> do you not know that I can fast 40 days? Did you not see me in January do the 21 day fast? You're talking about that person who's always dancing on tables on weekends. I will never find myself in that place. I will never. It, it sounds a little like us. When we've taken our walk with God and made it in our personal effort and not living in the righteousness that God so beautifully gives us. That we're undeserving and we fall short of his glory. That any pedestal that we could even think we're standing on, we're standing on because Jesus died for us. And not because we're any better than anybody else. So, so if you do live that lifestyle that, that, that boosts you up in the air and you think others will fall and you won't be careful. Peter got himself in a place where he could utter the words, I don't know that man. See, we don't boast in our ability. We boast in the love that God showers on us. He gives us the will and the grace to do. In verse 30, Jesus says, you are going to deny me. In verse 31, Peter responds. He says, even if I have to die with you. I will never deny you. Write this down if you're taking notes. It's the very things that you proclaim to stand on that get tested. I'll say it again. It's the very things that you declare. It's the very things that you say is your moral fiber. It's the very things that you say you live. It's the very things that you say you believe. And it's the very faith that you say you declare that gets tested. See, it's the reason why God tells us don't go around making vows and saying things you don't mean. He says it's foolishness to do that. Once you declare that faith, best you believe it will be tested. How do we know? Because in Mark 14, 66, as we begin to read that story, we see that the very thing that Peter said would not happen to him actually happens to him. He denies Jesus because he recognizes that his life is in danger. He just told Jesus that he would rather die with Jesus than deny Jesus. Then he denies Jesus because he realizes it, it is quite possible that he could die with Jesus. See, see, it's, 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 it's important that we are clear on where we stand. We claim to die for him when in actual fact, we deny him. Come on, let's read it together. Mark 14, 66. The Bible says, meanwhile, context quickly. In the background at this point, when we get to 66, Jesus has been arrested. Jesus has stood before a court. He's been spat at. He's been beaten. The Bible says they blindfolded him. They beat him up with fists. They slapped him around. And they ridiculed him. Then the Bible in verse 66 says, Meanwhile, while Jesus is getting slapped around, while Jesus is getting spat on and mocked on, meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warning, or rather warming himself 
at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, you are one of those with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 68, Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. He went on into the entryway. Then the rooster crowed. Verse 69, when the servant girl saw him standing there, she began telling the others to say, mm -mm, man, this man is definitely one of them. Verse 70, then Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, you must be. You see, in the beginning, they were asking him, could you be? Aren't you? Now they're saying, you must be. Because you are a Galilean. Verse 71, Peter swore. A curse on me if I am lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. Verse 72, and immediately the rooster crew, crowd, crowd, how do you say it? The rooster crowd the second time. Suddenly Jesus' words flashed in Peter's mind before the rooster crows twice. You will deny me three times. The Bible says Peter then broke down and wept. The Bible says Peter broke down and wept. Oh, Lord, help me get through this. In verse 66, it says, meanwhile. While everything was happening with Jesus, meanwhile. While Jesus was going through everything he was going through, it says, meanwhile, Peter was warming himself by the fire. If you're taking notes, maybe write it like this. Beware comfort during seasons of war. Beware choosing comfort during seasons of war. See, it was go time and Peter still had time to find a place to get warm. <laughs> Jesus is being beaten up. He's been falsely accused. He, he is probably on his way to die. Something that Peter knows because he was in the Last Supper. He, he knows how the story is going to unfold. Yet he has got time, meanwhile, to find fire. To warm himself. Beware. Not to choose comfort in the season of war. Woo! I don't know how loud I can say this. Beware. Not to choose mm, comfort in the season for war. Mm. God is asking you to fast. Woo! But it clashes with your travel plans. Beware. Not to choose comfort when it's time to war. God is asking you to give. But you have all the excuses in the world. Be careful not to choose comfort in the season of war. God is asking you to consecrate yourself. Be separated a little bit. Switch off the social media. Move away from a certain group of people. But because it's your status and these are your people and your tribe. Be careful not to choose comfort in a season of war. Be be careful. That you know what time it is. You got to know what time it is. Got to know what time it is. I don't know why I have to say this again. God is asking you for specific things. He's asking you to take up your prayer life. He's asking you to study the word a little bit more. He's asking you to find time to disciple. He's asking you to find time to deal with some of the anger that's in there. He's asking you for specific things. You're choosing comfort. Be careful. Still in verse 67. This is a quick one. I'm going to quickly browse through it. <laughs> the Bible tells us that the girl goes up to him and says, you were 
one of those with Jesus of Nazareth. Might step on some toes tonight. But we know that you are with him. We know that you are with him. Uh, we, we know that you are with him. See, see, you can't encounter this God and stay the same. We know that you used to talk different. We know that there were certain places we wouldn't find you in. We, we know that there was a dedication you had to God. We know that there was a type of prayer life that you had. We know that you had mannerisms and faith in a certain way. We know that you were with him. See, oftentimes when we move away from God, we, we think that people can't see. <laughs> I never posted on Instagram that I'm Christian. We know. <laughs> she says you were with him. You were with him. You used to speak different. You were with him. You used to pray a lot more. You were with him. You used to trust God a lot more. You were with him. The way you used to answer things, you were with him. And the Bible tells us that he denied him. Come on, let's look at verse 68. But Peter denied it. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Then he moved away from the fire to go into the entryway. Because more than him getting warm, he understood that he was in a place where he was being associated to something he did not want to be associated with at that time. So it is only then that he was willing to let go of the warmth. Verse 68 he says, I don't know what you're talking about. See, knowing God's goodness, having seen God's faithfulness, having walked with God, having seen him perform miracles, Peter, having seen him help you out, Peter, having seen him do great and mighty things, does not mean you're not going to deny him. See, Peter knows Jesus, but his actions deny him. Verse 70, the Bible tells us that a bystander then enters the conversation, walks up to Peter and says to Peter, you must be one of them. Again, we know. We know. Even though you deny it, there's something about you. Even though you want to walk away, there's something about you. Even though you're doing the things that you're doing, it just doesn't make sense. The math is not matching you. It's clear that this is not who you are. We know. You've encountered a great king. Verse 71. Peter responds to the bystander and says, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man. I want to remind you of Matthew 16. From about verse 15. Jesus asked one of the most important questions we see captured in the word of God. He says, who do you say I am? See, Jesus is asking relationship. Who do you say I am? I can hear what they say I am, but who do you say I am? Peter responds and says, you are the Christ. Another translation says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This is Peter in Matthew telling Jesus who Jesus is. Jesus responds to Peter in Matthew 16 and says to him, what you've answered, no man has revealed it to you. It's God in heaven himself that has given you this knowledge. It's the same Peter who confidently from his chest says, I don't know this man. I don't recognize this Messiah. Don't associate me with this living son of God. I don't know this man. Maybe what's even blind or mind blowing about the situation is that Peter watched Jesus heal the sick. 
Watch the audacity. He's watched Jesus break curses. Then has the audacity to place a curse over his own life. If he's lying, he, he knew. The one who can break curses. If you're taking notes, I want you to go ahead and write, I don't know this man. And under that, I want you to write this down. Point number one. The first thing that Peter does when he's got this interaction. In verse 68, this is so key. I hope somebody hears me tonight. Peter says, I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds a lot like us. Ugh. A lot of us deny knowing what the scriptures say about the life that we're currently living. Okay. A lot like Peter. Denying to know what she's talking about. A lot of us deny knowing what the word of God says about some of the sin we're harboring in our lives. A lot of us pretend and deny that we don't know what God says about the things and the lifestyle that we lead. We, 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 we deny knowing that prayer life is important. We, we deny knowing that, that giving is a principle of the kingdom. We deny knowing that we've got to study the word of God to show ourselves approved to God. We deny knowing that there's a holiness and righteousness that we live by we we deny knowing we we don't know what you're talking about we we don't know we we disassociate ourselves with knowing what god says about the current life that we're living peter confidently says i have no idea about what you're talking about if you're taking if you're taking notes this is what i want you to write down this is what i wrote down it might help you I said here, we want to know it in the Greek and in context only when it addresses our sin. But we're okay with it in English and out of context if it speaks about our blessing. I'll say it one more time for somebody at the back. We want to know it in the Greek, in the language of origin and the context of it. And maybe it may be misinterpreted. You know, God didn't really say wait. He meant wait in a, in a hypothetical, you know, Jesus. We want to know it in the Greek and in the context only when it speaks of our sin. But you and I are okay with English and out of context if it says that we are blessed. And if it says we're going to have everything that we want. Peter denied knowing what they were talking about. Hey, we've got to be careful. We're not playing jokes with God. That we continue to live a lifestyle that is far from what God has called us to live. Because we're denying to know what the truth says. Second thing I want you to write down under, I don't know this man. Is that Jesus loves Peter. Jesus time and time over expresses love to Peter. Whether it's through teaching, answering his questions, or guiding him along, he has expressed explicit love to Peter. The third time Peter denies Jesus, he says, I don't know this man. He now does not talk about not knowing anything about the situation. He says, the very man you're speaking about, I don't know him. He disassociates himself with the person, Jesus. He disassociates himself with every relationship he has with Jesus. He removes himself with the life experience in the past three years that he's had with Jesus. His teachings with Jesus, his friendship with Jesus. He denies the person Jesus, the same one he called Christ, the same one he called Messiah, the same one he called the son of the living God. Peter says, I don't know this man. He 
He had greater fear for what was to come to be associated with Jesus than he did reverence for God. He had greater fear, said again, for what would possibly come with the association with Jesus than having reverence for Jesus himself. He was more terrified at the thought of being killed because he was associated with Jesus than to be disassociated with Jesus. He prioritized his life. More than the one who gives him life. And maybe tonight I just came to say one thing. And maybe it's the same thing that Jesus said to the disciples and Peter that night. Or specifically, I guess, in this case to Peter. That the rooster is crowing. And maybe the rooster is sounding an alarm for some of us tonight. Maybe we've said things, but we haven't been living in that way. Maybe we've claimed association and allegiance to God, but at every given opportunity, we deny him. Maybe we believe that we trust in him and revere him and fear him, but our lives don't resemble the same thing. And what strikes me is that Peter only recognizes when the second rooster goes off that ish. This is exactly what Jesus said was going to take place. So when he was standing by the fire warming himself and the young servant girl came up to him to ask him about his association with Jesus, he didn't fall down to his knees and bow and weep. When the young girl continued to have conversations with others about his association with Jesus, he didn't bow down and begin to weep. When the bystander came to him and said to him, you must be, he didn't bow down and weep. It's when the second rooster went off that he remembered what Jesus said. See, whether for now you pretend you don't know what Jesus said, there will come a time where life brings you to the point that you will remember what Jesus said. You will remember that he said, seek his face. You will remember that daily seek his face. You will remember that separate yourself. You will remember that self-control is the fruit of the spirit. You will remember that pray without ceasing. You will remember the things that he said you you may live under the pretense of forgetting you may even say you don't know what we're talking about you may even say I don't know this man but life in itself within itself will bring you to a point where you hear the rooster sounding off and you remember that what Jesus said We don't have to get to the point where the rooster has to crawl. But for some of us, honestly, if we were to be honest tonight, at every good chance we get, we leave him. If the situation is bad enough, we don't have time for him. When the money is good enough, he is our last option. When we're busy pursuing our lives and careers, he's an afterthought. We, we forget that the rooster will crow. <laughs> Don't forget him. Pursue to always stand for him. Watch this if you continue to read the story. Jesus is crucified. 
he dies and he's buried. And in Mark 16, it speaks of his resurrection. Ooh, God is so good. God is so good. And in Mark 16, it speaks of his resurrection. It speaks about the angel sitting on the stone that was rolled away, telling the Marys, go and tell the disciples to meet Jesus where he said, ah, he was going to meet them. That even after all of that, Jesus is exactly where he said he will be. And maybe that's a message for you tonight. Go meet him. The Bible tells us that the angels tell the Marys, go tell the disciples to go meet them where Jesus said. The Bible then tells us that Jesus comes into contact with the ladies and he says the same thing. Go tell your brothers to go and meet me where I said. After all of them scattered and deserted him, he is faithful that when he arrives and he's resurrected, the message that he's sending out is go tell them to meet me where I said I will meet them. Go tell them to go to Galilee. Tell them to go to Galilee. Tell them to meet me in Galilee. Tell them I'm still in love with them. Tell them I still care for them. Tell them I still pursue them. Tell them I'm still here for them. Tell them. To meet me. Where I said we will gather. And the Bible then tells us that Jesus goes and meets with them. That some of them fall to their faces and begin to worship him. Others doubt him. Woo! Then Jesus then says to them. I've been given all authority in heaven and in earth. Go. I'm sending you out in the authority that I have. I've overcome death and I've conquered it. The authority lies with me. Go. What a love. What, what, what a love. There's nothing else I can say. What a love that even after we've messed up, even after we've fumbled, even after we've gone the wrong way, he is still meeting us in Galilee. And not only is he meeting us in Galilee, he is still entrusting us with the great commission. I don't know what you've been up to. I don't know how far you've moved away. I don't know how many roosters have sounded. I don't know how many times you've denied him, but I want to tell you that he wants to meet you at that place. He still pursues you. He still loves you. Go. To where he had instructed them to meet. We're out of time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness over oh, us. Woo, that even when we've wronged you so much, even if we've walked away, even if we've done our own thing, even if we've drifted, even if we've denied you openly, publicly, we've lived a life that is far away from you. We've lived a life that is unholy, unrighteous. Everything that you're not, Lord God, that we've pursued, we are humbled by the amount of love you shower over us. Lord God, we can hear the rooster loud and clear. And we recognize, Jesus, that we've denied you in many areas of our lives. We've walked away. We've scattered when travel hit. We've denied you with our actions. We've denied you with our behavior. We've denied you with our sinful ways. We've denied you with not living the life you've called us to do. We've denied you by disobedience. Where we, Lord, the list is endless. We have actively denied you but tonight Lord God we want to say we hear the rooster and like Peter with a repentant heart Lord God we fall down to our knees 
And we ask that you have mercy on us. But thank you for loving us the way you do. Ooh, what manner of love is this? That when everything is said and done, you still conquer death for our sake. When everything is said and done, you still go on the cross and hang for our sins. Woo. You conquer death for us. You, you give us life eternal. You love on us. You meet with us at the place you promised. Thank you for loving us the way you do. And Father, we just want to recommit our lives to you tonight. We don't want to live a fake or false or mediocre Christianity. We want relationship, communion, fellowship with you. We don't want to say one thing and behave another way. We don't want to stand in front of you and make claims and lie and then go off to live a different life from what we promised you. Lord, no. We're intentional about you. Holy Spirit, teach us how to live this life right. Teach us how to honor Jesus. Teach us how to love on God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 He loves you. More than you can ever imagine, he loves you. More than your past and your mistakes, he loves you. More than your shortcomings, he loves you. Amen. Alrighty, we're going to close it off here. We're back again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. We're going to pray. I want to invite you to come through and pray with us. God is good and he's faithful and he's loving. <laughs> what kind of love is this? That even after all of that, he still loves. All right, we'll see you soon. God bless you. Have a fantastic evening. I am going to drink my medication and sleep. <laughs> I'm actually scared. I think my doctor might be in this live. So I'm following the instructions. <laughs> um, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 6 o'clock. God bless you. Sleep well. Love on someone before you sleep tonight. Good night.